Hello everyone, welcome back to a new session on dentistry and more. So in oral pathology, today's session will be dealing with three syndromes, namely Sjogren syndrome, Frey syndrome and plumber Winson syndrome. So we have many syndromes in oral pathology. So this session is just highlighting three syndromes and the coming sessions will be dealing with the further syndromes. So let's see what is Sjogren syndrome, Frey syndrome and plumber Winson syndrome. So we'll start with the first one that is Sjogren syndrome. So it is an autoimmune disease. So we know what is autoimmune disease. The immune, uh, the immune system is acting against our own body cells. Actually, it is supposed to act against the antigens, the foreign bodies, but it is by some error, it is acting against our own body system. So that is autoimmune disease. So the most common striking features of Jogren syndrome is dry eyes and dry mouth. So there is lack of tear and lack of saliva will be present in Sjogren syndrome. That is the most striking feature of Sjogren syndrome. So what happens is the immune system affecting its own cell that is it affects the lacrimal glands and salivary glands. So these glands are supposed to produce saliva and tears. So when it affects these gland there will be improper production of tears and salivary gland so there will be dry eyes and dry mouth and it most commonly associated with rheumatoid so risk factors include age that is 40 years or greater than 40 years it usually diagnosed in this age group that is more than 40 years and women are more prone to have Jogren syndrome compared to men and rheumatic disease is common for people who have Jogren syndrome also to have a rheumatic disease. So rheumatic disease also a risk factor for Sjogren syndrome. And the most common uh, symptoms we already discussed they are uh, like skin rashes, dry cough and most commonly stiffness and swelling. It can have thyroid problems, kidney, liver, lungs, skin, nerves. So most of the organs are affected by these autoimmune diseases. And what are the complications? We know it has problem with production of saliva and ear. So there will be dental cavities. Why? Because the saliva is keeping the mouth clean by its flushing action. When saliva is less there will be more chance of caries and also yeast infection will be there and since it is dry eyes there will be problem with vision so how do we treat this so treatment is very symptomatic we can provide uh, eye drops medications the eye drops are uh, also known as crocodile tears and pilocarpine which is for uh, salivary gland so it improves the saliva and we can uh, suggest the patient to sip water frequently and also use uh, saliva producing uh, chewing gums and uh, such a symptomatic way we can manage this and diagnosis we can diagnose this by saliva flow test silogram schumer tear test so tear test is a special test for uh, counting the tear um, drops and biopsy is another method for Sjogren syndrome. So Sjogren syndrome, the basically you should remember the triad that is dry eyes, dry mouth and rheumatoid arthritis. It is an autoimmune disease which affects lacrimal and salivary glands. Now let's move on to the second syndrome that is Frey syndrome. 
Frey syndrome is also known as auriculotemporal syndrome. Also, another name is Dupuy syndrome. So, what happens is here also it is affecting salivary gland, but it is not an autoimmune disease. Jogren syndrome is an autoimmune disease. This is salivary gland is affected due to a surgery or a trauma or a neck dissection. In that case, the salivary gland and auriculotemporal nerve is affected. And what happens? There will be flushing and gestatory sweating. And where this happens? It is in the preauricular area. When this happens? In response to mastication or salivary stimulus. When we think about a very peculiar food like a lemon or a sore type food, there will be uh, saliva production usually but that time there will be sweating in the preauricular area because the auriculotemporal nerve is damaged so parotid gland and auriculotemporal nerve is damaged by any of the surgeries so this flushing and gestatory sweating will be there in this particular area and also they may have erythema anesthesia and parasthesia regarding Frey syndrome so how do we diagnose we can use minor iodine starch test so we can apply starch and iodine and get this test done for Frey syndrome and treatment we can uh, use botulinum injection and anticholinergic ointments like scopolamine and also surgical interventions so Sjogren syndrome and Frey syndrome it is both affected the salivary glands are affected but here it is autoimmune disease and here it is a trauma to the auricular temporal nerve and parotid gland so both the cases there is problem with saliva here there will be preauricular area flushing and sweating when there is a response to mastication or a salivary stimulus when we think about particular food or such thing there will be sweating in the preauricular area so that is Frey syndrome or Dupuy syndrome or auriculotemporal syndrome and the third syndrome today's session we are discussing about plumber Vincent syndrome it is a very different one not related to these two it is also known as Patterson Kelly syndrome these are the people who reported these uh, syndromes first and it is also known as sideropenic dysphagia so dysphagia we know it is a uh, difficulty of uh, swallowing and why this is happening this is due to the long-term iron deficiency anemia so iron is very much vital nutrient for our body so when this iron is deficient and anemia causes and it lasts for a very longer period it might result a plum plumber wilson syndrome and it has a peculiar triad so what is that triad the anemia dysphagia and esophageal webs so why this esophageal webs there is small and thin growths of tissue partially blocks the foot pipe or esophagus so on the track of esophagus there will be small and thin growths of tissue will be there so this is why the swallowing is difficult or dysphagia is formed the person is not eating properly so there will be weakness and person may have burning mouth glossitis splenomegaly colonychia and all these are associated symptoms with plumber Vincent syndrome and diagnosis is basically by endoscopy blood test and biopsy treatment it is mainly nutritional intervention because it is iron deficiency anemia and nowadays iron deficiency anemia and this plumber Vincent syndrome is uh, quite rare because the nutrients um, interventions or the nutrients deficiency are a uh, little bit not or oh, very much heard and it the complication related to plumber Vincent is squamous cell carcinoma. So
सो टूडे सेशन वॉज अबाउट थ्री सिंड्रोम्स वन इज जॉकन सिंड्रोम फ्रे सिंड्रोम एंड प्लमर विंसन सिंड्रोम सो दिस टू सिंड्रोम्स वेर एसोसिएटेड विथ सेलेवरी ग्लैम्स एंड लैक्रमर ग्लैम्स दिस इज अटो इम्यून डिसीज दिस इज अ डिसीज ड्यू टू द ट्रामा टू द सेलेवरी ग्लैंड एंड ऑरिकुलर टेम्परल नर्व एंड दिस इज अ न्यूट्रिशनल डेफिशंसी एंड डेफिशंसी प्लमर विंसन सिंड्रोम so these three are commonly asked question so whatever i put in this board is asked once or twice in the university exam so uh, try to understand the difference between these three so i'll come up with more syndromes in uh, my next sessions thank you Hello everyone welcome back to another session on dentistry and more so let's continue our syndrome so last class uh, we had seen few syndromes so today's class is about stevens johnson syndrome and papillon leafway syndrome stevens johnson syndrome it is also known as toxic epidermolysis necrosis or lyell syndrome so these two should be studied together So let's see what is Stevens Johnson syndrome and Papillon Leffe syndrome. So let's begin with Stevens Johnson syndrome. So we should study Stevens Johnson syndrome along with Lyell syndrome. It is also known as toxic epidermolysis necrosis. because the both having same clinical presentation differs only with the severity of clinical presentation that is the skin uh, reactions so it is a immune complex mediated hypersensitivity reaction so this is a hypersensitivity reaction to uh, certain drugs or certain infections and it is a severe expression of erythema multiforme and it is also known as erythema multiforme major so we should know what is erythema multiforme so erythema multiforme it's basically a skin immune reaction due to a infection or medication uh, its name combined from erythema multi and forme erythema means uh, redness multi is many and forme is shapes so it describes the main symptoms which is a rash on the body so the rash on the body where each mark resembles a bull's eye form so it is a severe form of erythema multiforme it is also known as erythema multiforme major so the basic etiology is infection it could be a herpes simplex virus infection cytomegalovirus virus infection it could be due to the aids or epstein barr virus infection and it could be due to drug induced so that is the main reason that is the penicillin uh, drug induced reaction is a two third of total cases of stevens johnson syndrome and also it could, it could be due to phenytoin nsaids or uh, allopurinol so these drugs can uh, result in this hypersensitivity reaction and also it could be an idiopathic reaction so it is nothing but a immune complex mediated hypersensitivity reaction so we know classifications of hypersensitivity 1 2 3 and 4 so this is immune complex mediated hypersensitivity so there will be always a causal factor that is either infection or a drug or it could be a idiopathic in nature so it is also known as erythema multiforme major because the clinical presentation is all same because it is forming erythematous reaction on the skin surface and the risk factors include uh, the males having more predilection compared to the female almost double because it is 2 is to 1 uh, ratio we can see so in risk factors uh, the second one is age it is most commonly seen in 20 to 40 years that is the middle aged people are more affected with this stevens johnson syndrome so what are the clinical features it is most commonly affecting uh, the surface that is skin and mucous membranes are involved uh, most commonly the oral nasal eye gi tract respiratory tract urethral 
tract so all these surfaces are involved with this muco uh, skin and mucous membrane and also we can uh, see sore throat chills malaise and fever associated symptoms with stevens johnson syndrome so it's, it's like mucocutaneous lesions they develop abruptly and clusters of outbreaks which last from two to four weeks and the lesions are typically non pruritic and fever will be there in almost 85 percentage of the cases and involvement of oral and mucous membrane may be severe enough that patient may not be able to eat or drink and also there is conjunctivitis and patients with genitourinary involvement may complain of dysuria or an inability to void so these are the basic uh, clinical features and the next thing is if the basal uh, body surface area involvement is less than 10 percentage we can say that it is a minor form of toxic epidermolysis necrosis or can say that stephens johnson syndrome is not very much wide and the basal surface area is 10 to 30 percentage it is a combination of compilation of both stephens johnson syndrome and toxic epidermolysis necrosis and if the basal surface area is greater than 30 percentage it is toxic epidermolysis necrosis so that is a severe form of stephens johnson syndrome so basically what happens in this is there is a death of keratinocytes so which causes separation of dermis from epidermis that is why the skin changes are seen the keratinocytes which connects the dermis and epidermis yeah. is dying off then there is a separation of dermis from epidermis and what are the complications associated with stephens johnson syndrome so the complication includes esophageal strictures renal failure respiratory failure and also there might be scarring and deformity of face so the esophageal strictures renal failure and respiratory failure on extensive cases and also scarring and deformity due to this uh, particular skin lesion and regarding the investigations there is no uh, laboratory studies other than biopsy exist which can aid the doctor in establishing the diagnosis uh, basically the skin biopsy is a definitive diagnosis because uh, we can see that bullae are sub epidermal and epidermal cell necrosis may be noted so these are the uh, pathological features and while coming to the treatment and management basically only symptomatic treatment is possible so it is mostly dealt just like how it is in the extensive burns so it is almost like an extensive burn case but the cause is little different so that's all about stephens johnson syndrome it is a immune complex mediated disease which is a ex extreme uh, form of erythema multiforme so etiology could be infections and drugs and idiopathic nature and it involves skin and mucous membranes of various organs like oral oral cavity nasal cavity eye uh, gastrointestinal and respiratory tract and it is associated with toxic epidermolysis necrosis if it is greater than 30 percentage and there is a death of keratinocytes that is why this is separated that's dermis and epidermis and the complications and treatment so now let's move on to the papillon leafy syndrome it is also known as palmoplantar keratoderma with periodontitis so as the name suggests it has involvement of keratinization on palms and plantar region and also it associated with severe bone destruction that is the alveolar bone so we can say that it is a disease with periodontitis and keratinization in the palms and plantar region so it is a autosomal recessive region recessive disorder so it is a immune complex hypersensitivity so when you are studying syndromes always study in two or three syndromes together so you never get confused if you are studying one syndrome at a time the high chances of you uh, mixing up the clinical features and the course with another one so always study the syndromes 
two or three at a time that's why I'm keeping uh, the syndromes in a single board with two or three syndromes so you always keep uh, comparing the diseases and studying so it will be in your memory for a very long time so always compare and study not just one syndrome at a time so two or three syndromes take at a time and study and compare the course the clinical features the manifestations and the treatment so it will be very easy and it will be remembering for a very long time so this is a autosomal recessive uh, disorder and it is a disorder of keratinization so what happens is there is a thickening of soles and palms so severe keratinization causing thickening of soles and palms and also severe destruction of periodontal bone so severe periodontitis is there so why it is happening it is due to the mutation in cathepsin c gene so that is a particular gene which is involved with this syndrome so there is a mutation and causing this syndrome so what are the clinical features from the name itself you know that there is keratinization in palmar and plantar region and also periodontitis so gingiva stomatitis periodontitis and swollen gingiva extreme resorption of bone and deep pockets so these are the periodontal manifestation so thickening of soles of palm and plantar region so the patient has premature loss of deciduous teeth and permanent teeth so deciduous teeth it is uh, exfoliated completely by the age of 10 to 12 years that is the molars the deciduous molars replaced by premolars around 10 to 12 years but in this case what happens is by age of 4 to 5 years complete tooth is lost that is deciduous tooth is completely lost by age of four to five years and if it is permanent teeth it could be completely gone by the age of 14 or 15 years that is supposed to be for a lifetime it is completely lost because of severe periodontitis that is the extreme resorption of bone and deep pockets so the teeth will be completely lost and the gingiva will back to its normal shape so it's a very weird condition the loss of deciduous teeth and skin lesions will be there white brown red or uh, scaly in nature so what happens is these types of lesions undergo crustacean cracking and deep fissuring so the hand and foot region will undergo the crustacean cracking and deep fissuring and also you can see follicular keratosis, hyperhidrosis, calcification of fox cerebrae and choroid plexus. So these are the another features which is seen with this syndrome that is follicular keratosis, hyperhidrosis, calcification of fox cerebrae and choroid plexus. So what are the histopathological features is hyperkeratosis, hypergranulosis and acanthosis. So basically we treat this disease mainly we uh, treat the periodontitis that is a infectious in nature that is scaling and root planning we can perform with antibiotics and uh, retinoids and a good oral hygiene by providing him continuous chlorhexidine mouthwash. Uh, in case of um, not savable tooth we can go for extraction and provide him a rehabilitation with uh, removable dentures or complete dentures or even with implants so that is about papillon leafy syndrome it is also known as palmo plantar keratoderma with periodontitis so it is a autosomal recessive disorder of keratinization which causing tooth loss and palmar and plantar keratinization that is papillon leafy syndrome stephen uh, stephen's johnson syndrome different one it is also known as uh, toxic epidermolysis necrosis or Lyell's disease in its severe form Stephens Johnson syndrome is itself a severe expression of erythema multiforme so it starts with erythema multiforme then Stephens Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermolysis necrosis the severity is increasing so that's all about uh, Stephens Johnson syndrome and papillon leafy syndrome so we have more syndromes coming up in the further sessions so so far we have covered uh, Frey syndrome, gorlin gott syndrome, plummer vincent syndrome and uh, down syndrome Stephen Johnson's and papillon leafy syndrome 
so few more syndromes are left so i'll come up with those syndromes in my next sessions thank you hello everyone welcome back to a new session on dentistry and more so today we have two syndromes it is myofascial pain dysfunction syndrome or mpds or burning mouth syndrome or bms so it's a continuation of our uh, various syndromes last three sessions we have covered various syndromes so today's session also will be covering these two syndromes uh, there are actually various uh, various uh, syndromes present in our uh, oral pathology uh, subject but we are focusing only on the syndromes the main syndromes which have been asked for university exam so the idea is to give you some tips about each syndrome so you can easily memorize this and write it for the exam so let's see what is mpds and what is bms So we'll begin with burning mouth syndrome. It is a burning sensation without any detectable cause. So it is nothing but burning, painful or itching sensation located in oral mucosa. And the tongue is the most affected part followed by lips and palate. So it is a problem seen in oral cavity, especially the tongue, uh, lips and palate without any detectable cause so that is burning mouth syndrome so usually we know ulcers and other lesions which causes burning sensation but this is without any particular cause so the clinically no apparent alterations are present in patient's mouth so what are the epidemiological features of this disease this is most commonly seen among women that is it is increased with age and it is like 6 is to 1 predilection compared to males that is female predilection is almost 6 times compared to the males and it is seen among women after menopause that is 3 to 12 years after menopause it is commonly seen and it is very rare before 30 years so that is uh, something related to the epidemiology of BMS. Now let's see the classification. So it is classified into three type 1, type 2 and type 3. It is based on the symptoms present when a person awake or, or upon waking. That is type 1. There is no symptom upon waking but it increases throughout the day. Type 2 is the symptoms present when upon aching and it is throughout the day it is present and this is the most common type that is type 2 type 3 there is no regular pattern and it is the least common one and let's see what are the etiological factors actually it is not confined to any particular factor we cannot say that this causes burning mouth syndrome there are many factors which can cause the burning sensation in mouth so those are we can uh, cl classify that into local and systemic factors the local factors involves uh, oral candidiasis lichen planus uh, allergy or uh, allergy lichen planus oral candidiasis and systemic uh, factors involves hormonal changes vitamin b12 uh, folic acid or iron deficiency Diabetes mellitus, uh, maybe the side effect of few medications, few autoimmune diseases and salivary gland disorders and some medications like AC inhibitors and even trauma and uh, psychiatric uh, problems. So local factors uh, like danger problems also could be there like ill-fitting uh, interincisal space and vertical dimension problems and maybe the uh, median rhomboid glossitis hypersensitivity to certain food materials uh, lichen planus I mentioned already and also oral habits like tongue thrusting and even carcinoma and maybe the prolonged use of chlorhexidine mouthwash also could be a etiological factor uh, some 
disorders like uh, Sjogren's syndrome also could be a factor because it is uh, associated with a dry mouth and dry eyes so burning can be seen in these patients so uh, these are the uh, etiological factors associated with uh, burning mouth syndrome and what are the clinical features so co most common clinical feature is burning sensation uh, especially the anterior part of tongue and dyscusia and dysesthesia so that is dyscusia is the altered taste and dysesthesia is uh, itching or pain sensation and it is especially present on the anterior uh, one third of the tongue and what are the treatment options there is no uh, particular treatment options if it is a milder case uh, we can go for a uh, psychological counseling and uh, the moderate to severe cases should go for drug therapy like um, amitriptyline and alpha lipoic acid so burning mouth syndrome is uh, very peculiar because uh, we have many diseases many conditions many lesions which can result in burning mouth but without any specific cause without any clinical manifestation the presence of burning is actually known as burning mouth syndrome and it is most commonly seen with women especially post menopausal period and we have three classification and oh, n number of uh, etiological factors so now let's move on to myofascial pain dysfunction syndrome or mpds so it is a pain disorder which starts from trigger points in myofascial structures so what are these trigger points these trigger points are within the skeletal muscle which is triggered by macro or micro trauma happening to these skeletal structures so it is a pain disorder as the name suggests it is a pain disorder which is starting from few or many trigger points which is present in the myofascial structures so these trigger points are uh, are elicited or responded by the macro or micro uh, micro trauma happening to these structures so it is uh, 30 percent of the total population is affected and the females are most affected three is to one predilection and it is most commonly seen in middle age group that is 15 to 40 years so we have a cycle of events in this etiology so this is a cycle of events that is stress is causing muscular hyperactivity again the dental irritation is also causing muscular hyperactivity so what happens when there is hyperactivity of muscle the muscle fatigue so muscular fatigue which leads to myofascial pain dysfunction syndrome okay at the same time muscular over contraction can also leads to mpds muscular over extension can also leads to mpds so what happens due to mpds there is contracture there is degenerative arthritis there is internal derangement and there is occlusal disharmony so due to occlusal disharmony and internal derangement the chewing pattern is changed and also due to the degenerative arthritis and contracture the, again the chewing pattern will be changed so chewing pattern is changed due to all these reasons that is mpds affect the degenerative arthritis it causes contracture it causes occlusal disharmony and it changes the internal structure that internal derangement so all these results in chewing pattern so what happens once the chewing pattern is changed it will again cause mpds so it is a vicious cycle okay so it starts with stress muscular muscular hyperactivity and dental irritation goes to muscle fatigue and muscular over contracture and muscular over extension mpds goes to arthritis internal derangement occlusal disharmony it results in chewing pattern it itself goes back to mpds so in pathophysiology what happens 
when the etiological factors so all the etiological factors which leads to micro or macro trauma to the musculoskeletal system to muscle spasm so all these etiological factors which causes trauma that is micro or macro trauma on the musculoskeletal system which leads to muscle spasm so what happens so this hypertonicity may lead to muscle fatigue so this is what i was uh, i'm explaining uh, hypertonicity there will be muscle fatigue and accumulation of lots of metabolic by products such as lactic acid prostaglandin bradykinins and histamines so due to this hypertonicity and muscle fatigue there will be by products that is metabolic by products such as lactic acid prostaglandin bradykinin and histamine so what happens the accumulation of these pain mediators lowers the pain threshold to mechanical and chemical stimuli which leads to mpds so it is a cycle etiological factors micro or macro trauma muscle spasm what happens then there is by products metabolic by products such as prostaglandin bradykinin histamine lactic acid which cause uh, pain threshold lowering the pain threshold to mechanical and chemical stimuli which leads to mpds so the classification uh, spasm of lateral pterygoid either uh, or uh, it is spasm of uh, elevator muscles or it is spasm of lateral pterygoid and elevator muscles so clinical features includes pain discomfort limited jaw movements uh, the clicking and other jaw noises and uh, tendon so in clinical features so there are basically uh, four categories so we can express these clinical features in four category that is neurologic otologic gastrointestinal tract and musculoskeletal in neurological there is tingling numbness blurred vision uh, and lacrimation in otologic tinnitus ear pain dizziness and vertigo in gi tract nausea vomiting uh, diarrhea or constipation musculoskeletal there is uh, fatigue tension tiredness weakness and joint pains so how do we diagnose mpds the most uh, common four criterias the unilateral pain muscle tenderness the clicking and limited jaw movements so these are the four criterias for diagnosing mpds unilateral pain muscle tenderness clicking and limited jaw movements and how do we uh, treat this the treatment is basically uh, we go for 7 hours occlusal rehabilitation so it start with 7 hours so that is the first one is remove extraction of teeth second one is reshape grinding of uh, any occlusal high points or such things and reposition that is doing uh, using orthodontic treatment and restore any conservative filling or conservative treatment replace that is using processes reconstruct that is tmj surgery and the last one is regulate that is regulating the habits and symptoms so remove reshape reposition restore replace reconstruct and regulate extraction extraction grinding ortho treatment conservative treatment processes tmj surgery and control of habits that is 7 hours so 7 hours involved with this 7 7 hours involved with management of myofascial pain dysfunction so that's all about mpds so this isn't a complete uh, details of any uh, long essay this might be asked for a long essay but it is to give a very brief idea and uh, a, a pilot view so i i would say a pilot view that is uh, what are the basic features what are the striking features of any syndrome 
so you can easily build up the content while writing the exam so syndromes uh, we have completed uh, syndromes which are being asked mainly for university uh, papers so i'll come up with a different uh, topic in uh, oral pathology so hope you understood all the syndromes uh, we covered so far we co finished it in four sessions so anyway uh, i'll come up with new topics in uh, oral pathology thank you Hello everyone, welcome back to a new session on dentistry and more. Today we have two genetic disorders that is Down syndrome and gorlin gott syndrome. Down syndrome is uh, also known as trisomy 21 and gorlin gott syndrome it is an autosomal dominant uh, syndrome which is having a triad of classic symptoms. Now let's see what are these two disorders so down syndrome it is a chromosomal abnormality where the problem lies with the chromosome number 21 so it is known as trisomy 21 an extra chromosome is present on 21 so it is clinically uh, presented as flattened face there will be small head short neck protruding tongue and upward palpebral fissure with small ear and there will be poor muscle tone and broad and short hands short fingers and excessive flexibility there are lots of clinical presentation but I have mentioned a uh, very few so the problem with the chromosome number 21 with flattened face small head short neck protruding tongue upward palpebral fissure small ear poor muscle tone broad and short hands short fingers and excessive flexibility so what are the uh, risk factors the most common risk factor one is anyway it is a genetical involvement so there is genetic uh, problems and the familial tendency might be there and another one is a advanced maternal age as the age of a mother increases the chances of down syndrome also increases and this down syndrome kids or persons will be having problems with heart and gastrointestinal defect will be there there will be uh, immune disorders they might facing sleep apnea obesity and spinal problems so these are kind of uh, multi system uh, involvement and uh, on a treatment side there is no much treatment only just to improve the quality of life and uh, provide a good social support but uh, when we think about the dental aspect uh, since the patient is having high production of saliva the chances of caries is very less but uh, the patient uh, or the person might not be able to uh, do a proper oral hygiene measures so in turn the gingivitis and periodontal problems will be very high and there will be increased bruxism and hypertonic tongue and mouth breathing will be there that will, persons will be with narrow palate and class 3 uh, prognathic mm, profile so down syndrome is a multi-system uh, involvement due to the trisomy 21 so now let's move on to the gorlin gott syndrome gorlin gott syndrome it's also known as nevoid basal cell carcinoma syndrome as the name suggests it was uh, explained by two people that is gorlin and gotts it is also a genetical problem that is autosomal dominant genetical disorders 
and the involved gene is PTCH1 gene. So that is a gene involved in this particular syndrome and it is expressed as a classical triad that is multiple basal cellular epithelioma that is a, a malignant condition and the keratosis there will be many keratosis oral keratosis and bifid ribs so this is a classical triad symptoms of gorlin gort syndrome basal cell carcinoma OKCs and bifid ribs so there are many other problems other clinical problems involved with this gorlin gort syndrome and the first one is the calcification of fox cerebri, the palmar plantar epidermal pits, the spine rib abnormalities, macrocephaly, frontal bossing, and ocular malformation. So this will be most commonly diagnosed by major criteria and minor criteria. Major criteria the presence of more than two basal cell carcinoma under uh, 20 years and OKCs that is odontogenic keratosis presence and palmar pits uh, if more than three and also the bifid trips these are the major criteria whereas the minor criteria is microcephaly sorry the macrocephaly uh, then the hypertelorism and frontal bossing so these are the minor criteria to diagnose the gorlin gort syndrome or just known as the gort syndrome so treatment is basically the enucleation, enucleation of all these cyst or cases and uh, genetic counseling also can be done as a preventive measure. So these are two uh, genetic disorders that is Down syndrome and gorlin gott syndrome. These are commonly asked question. Uh, so you can write all the clinical features, uh, the cause and uh, some of the risk factors and the diagnostics criteria and related to the dental problem uh, in case of Down syndrome. I'll come up with new syndromes in dentistry and more. Thank you.